I think one of the biggest things is during all of this, our customer base has shifted a little bit um, because of the fact that no one was really around, but we were the only store open in Soho for pretty much two or three months. We have more of the essential workers that now come into the store because we were the only one serving hot coffee. But then when they came in, they discovered everything else and we learned so much from them. You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Whether it's for food, fuel, drinks, or snacks, about half of the U.S. population shops at a convenience store every day. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. Welcome to Convenience Matters. I'm Carolyn Schneer with Nax. Retailers often find their niche to stand out in order to grow sales and gain customer loyalty. Whether a convenience store is competing against another store across the street or just down the road, Finding and selling an amazing new product or having the cleanest, newest store design is how our industry innovates and evolves. Throw in a global pandemic and social unrest, and that can make any retailer wonder what's next. But not Rachel Krupa, owner and CEO of the Goods Mart convenience store in New York. With roughly 400 square feet of retail space, the store is quintessentially New York, a small footprint that maximizes every inch of space for its 200 plus SKUs. Since opening in 2012, the Goods Mart focused on curation and community. Rachel sells items that meet certain nutritional profiles, but only if the food tastes delicious. The food also must be better, but not perfect, in terms of nutrition. And the items, almost all packaged, and Krupa tries to avoid single-use plastic packaging whenever possible. Nax featured the Good Mart on its iconic video series Ideas to Go in 2019 and again recently in a video tribute to retailers most impacted by 2020 events. My colleague and co-host Chris Blazinski interviewed Rachel in July of 2020, not long after protests dominated news headlines in many U.S. cities, including New York. In this segment of the interview that I'm going to share with you is how Rachel found new products, new ways of doing business, and most importantly, found hope in a difficult year. Take it away, Chris. You're trying to bring in products that are just better for you. And you do a really good job of curating that. And we touched on that in our Ideas to Go video that we did last year, which I thought was just fascinating. Like your store is like literally the size of my office right now. Like it's not big. Like you are a small store. It's in New York City. And you're able to bring all of these like amazing products in such a small space. Like I felt like I was literally a kid in a candy store when I was in not that you're selling a lot of candy, but just that excitement of all these like incredible products that I had never seen before. And I've been in a lot of convenience stores in my 15 years at NAC. So, yeah. And I think that's what works so well about it is because it's like the 300 square foot store that you're able to see everything and you don't necessarily have 50 of the same products. Um, and that's like something that is like so incredible. And that's what we're only going to continue to do with the snack boxes is continue to innovate and like think of other fun ways to like elevate the brands that we have, but then also keep it in like the good spirit. Um, we just launched for the holiday is actually we're doing a personalized curation box where I'm going to be doing a 30 minute zoom, like basically like this and like talking through people that want to gift that or do it for themselves and be like, okay, let's walk through the store. Let me talk about all the products that we have. And then let's curate your snack box for yourself or for a loved one based on the stories I tell you about the products, but also like, do you like Cheetos? Do you like Doritos? Like, hey, here's a better for you option because of that. So it allows us to like really like personalize a snack box is a little bit more of an elevated price just because it's you know, 30 minutes of Zoom with me. Um, but it, it's going to be something fun that I'm like, excited to see if people even want that. Um, but it's telling the stories. And I think it just gives more of a background of like the cool products that we have. And I just also want to ask questions to people that would want to do that and be like, what do you like? What don't you like? Because it's also like market research. So you can talk to people and like learn more about behaviors and trends and also what people want and what they don't want. And that just like makes us a better store to understand what people are looking for. Yeah. And so one of the things that I saw on your Instagram page over the summer, which I thought was really, really cool. And I was jealous because I don't live in New York, um, was the Jamaican barbecues. And I think there's a story behind the chef too. Yes. They're so good. Um, they're so good. It was just, during in the midst of COVID, our UPS um, driver, Darian Williams, um, just came in to help me. He actually like 
stopped in our store multiple times so that I can get this more snack boxes out. And just during the times that he stopped, I always have to like close up a box real fast. And he's like, I got some time. And I'm like, okay, tell me about you. And then we would talk about this love of food that we had. And he was just like, I make the best food. And I'm like, no, show me, you know? And he was just like, yeah, I had a restaurant in Jamaica for five years because he's from Kingston. And I was just like, I love jerk chicken. Can you please like next time you have a family dinner, will you please like bring me some? And he brought me jerk chicken in like a Tupperware bowl and a whole fish. And I was just like, this is the best jerk chicken. The sauce was incredible. And at that moment I was just like, do you want to do a cookout outside? I have no idea what we're doing, but bring a grill and let's sell the plates and, you know, make it a community, like basically cookout. So we have been doing Jamaican cookouts every two weeks, pretty much since the end of July. Um, and it's like an incredible time to build like the neighborhood because it's our neighborhood UPS driver is cooking this incredible Jamaican chicken and like jerk pork and oxtail and curry shrimp. And the menu just continues to expand because his goal is to open up a food truck one day. So we want to be that catalyst to be like, let's get your, 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 your momentum going. Like let's help you give you cash because he takes all the money that he makes. But then like, let's have a block party because it drives more people into the store. And then we do different things where we had a voters registration truck with Tony's chocolate. Then we have like a plant, like, you know, store around the corner set up and sell plants. We've also done a safe sampling where a lot of the brands in the store, you can't do sampling anymore because of just, you know, giving out food inside of an enclosed area so that we've set up tables on the sidewalk where the, everything is still enclosed, but then the founders are able to talk to our customers and they're able to take samples with them to try at home. You know, it's doing fun things like that and like having like a muralist, our muralist is like selling some of her work on the sidewalk and like the neighbors just love it and they look forward to it. And it, it also just builds our community, but it also helps drive sales inside too. Because like, that's what people want. They're like, oh, what is this store? Oh, the goods mart. Like I remember walking by, but I never went in before. But now they're coming in because they see like the movement on the street. So sometimes you just need to create your own movement. And that's like what we did was just like create the flow of jerk chicken and play like great Bob Marley and like, you know, Williams like Island, like beats that he loves. And it's just like vibrant. And it, it's been just like, I think one of my favorite memories of, the summer as well, because like I look forward to them because you can be like, Hey, how are you? And now it, it just, it's a sense of community more than ever. Well, I hope he opens the food truck because I think that would be awesome. And it's such an amazing story that you can say, you know, I'm a UPS driver delivering snack boxes and got the opportunity to showcase my food and, you know, whole another entrepreneurial story which is fascinating. I mean, this, this industry never ceases to amaze me on how one idea of just like, hey, let's bring the community together to eat Jamaican food can spiral into, you know, someone's dream literally coming true. And I think there's stories like that all over our industry and they're completely fascinating. I mean, to me, it's yeah. so much more than just the box on the corner. I mean, and I think what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. And it also shows too, like there's, there's a level of, you know, you're, you're doing your thing, but you want the community to thrive too. And I think having New York City being, I don't care where you were in the world, like you saw it was the epicenter of, you know, COVID for quite some time. And that had to have been completely terrifying. And then having, you know, then what happened, you know, with your store being busted into and, you know, all the unrest that was going on in the community. I mean, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and some people were probably, you know, you, you looked at the way that I see it is that you looked at things that were happening as opportunities to say like, you know what, this is our community and we're going to come out of this better than ever. And I think you did it, have done a fantastic job. So my curiosity is like, what is next? Like what, what more do you have up your sleeve that you're willing to share? I think it's, you know, for us, it's, you know, we're looking to open up more stores um, and we're in talks of, you know, bringing our incredible burrito maker from LA to New York. And Which are very up. good. I've had, so I can. <laughs> yeah. And people love them. And it's also just like helping them expand to the East coast. Um, and so we're looking to do that and hopefully that's going to happen early, you know, earlier this year or earlier 
2021, which I can't believe it's already been a year gone by. Um, but it's just like continue to innovate. And, you know, I think we just have to see where things go in the next, like even three months, because I think winter is going to be really hard for a lot of people, you know, and at the same time, it's like, how do you continue to pivot and innovate and, you know, change things for the better and look at ways that you can build, you know, make lemonade out of lemons and still kind of turn things so that you can be more profitable or you can make a change so that you can stay open. But I think it's like continuous like to listen and also just kind of move to see how it is. But for us, it's like more stores expanding, like the snack boxes, we're probably going to do subscription um, at some point soon, but it's just a matter of finding the time and the bandwidth to do everything. You um you are a one woman operation. It seems like <laughs> I don't know where you find the time or the energy, but I mean it's amazing. And I think um where I mean where I'm just curious, like where do you find these ideas? I mean, there's just you have so many, and you're like one store in New York, and it's like the you're like an idea factory. Like where do you get all this from? <laughs> I think it's just, it's just looking and listening to people that come in and what they're looking for and need, but then also tapping into what, what is happening in other parts of it's not just food and retail, but it's also what's happening in fashion, what's happening, you know, with protests, what's happening, you know, what's the election, you know, what is going on and then how can we be part of the conversation if we want to be part of the conversation in a way that is authentic and transparent to how we run business. Um, but then a lot of it is just like, you know, when you just like wake up and you're just like, oh my gosh, here's an idea. Can we do it? And I'm a believer that no idea is too crazy unless you, you have to try it. You know, you have to like talk it through with friends and be like, does it make sense? Like, you know, monetary wise, just like everything else, but like, why not try if the, the reward could be so much more than like the work. Why not try it? Why not? Why have like remorse of not trying it versus like trying it and like making a pivot so that you can change that and continue to go? Because I don't believe that there's mistakes or you do anything wrong. I think you continuously learn from them. So if you can have continuous learnings to make something better, then at the end, you're just going to be a stronger store, stronger retailer, stronger business. Well, I appreciate you so much taking the time not only to talk to us this year but last year as well with the ideas to go video and we got to come out and visit you and really you know see what you're doing in the store and i just think it's completely fascinating and absolutely love talking to you and i know our audience and other retailers can definitely learn from you and hope you hope you're around for the long haul for sure Thanks. And I love talking to you guys. It just makes me so happy. It, it, it's, it, this is just like what you're doing and how everyone in the industry is changing and just like being a strong force um, is incredible just to be part of your family. So thank you. Absolutely. While you may not be able to get to New York City to check it out for yourself, you can see video of the Goods Mart from 2020 and 2019 at the NAX website. Check it out at convenience.org slash the Goods Mart. And you also can find more at that link in the episode notes. So thank you to Chris and Rachel for your time. And thank you for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.